Hey everyone, welcome to this final piece discussing the general video game AI competition for 2014. Uh, we've taken a bit of time to discuss what this competition is in a previous video and discuss its relevance for the sort of larger AI community. If you've no idea what I'm talking about, hit the link, go back, watch this introductory video, the rest of this will make a lot more sense. If, on the other hand, you want to hear about the competition itself, how it played out, then, you know, don't do anything, I guess, because we're about to talk about that right now! GVGAI 2014 took place at the IEEE Computational Intelligence and Games Conference, which was over in Dortmund, Germany, in August. Now, a competition will effectively live or die off the back of the number of participants that it receives, given that this sort of helps not only show recognition from within the AI community that this is an interesting problem to tackle, but also that people understand what the problem is, um, people can relate to that problem, but there's actually also this other really subtle thing about whether or not the API and the tools that have been provided by the competition organisers are sufficient enough to allow people to do their work effectively. Fortunately, this competition was rather well received. With the final number of participants, including the sample bots that the organisers themselves put in, um, totaled over 20. You might think that's not massive, but it is evidence that a significant number of academics felt that this was worth exploring. Given this was also the first time the competition ran, with only a couple of months prep, I'd say this is pretty excellent news for the organisers. As discussed in the previous video, the API provided for the competition allows for your agent to be tested against a large number of sample games. And it was important to appreciate that these were not what would be used in the final run. What we've actually seen so far in this video and in previous videos are just bits of footage from the sample games. We've not actually seen the final competition games yet. And given that the agents would be tested against a whole bunch of hidden games that nobody had ever seen before, you had to make sure that the systems were built, tailored, such that they were not domain specific. And well, why is this relevant? Well, the whole point of the competition is general behaviour. So in theory, your agent can play any game that's provided, even games that it's never been tested on, games that you've never even seen. As a result, we saw new stuff, uh, such as Camel Race, which was a rather simple straight line race, as well as clones of Dig Dug and Pac-Man at the competition. Now in hindsight, I really should have expected Pac-Man to turn up. I mean, I did a whole video about why AI folk like Pac-Man, so shouldn't have been that surprised that that just popped up in amongst the final competition entries. The final rankings of submissions was guided largely by how many games an agent could finish, alongside the total score and time. This then ranked submissions, which were given a score based upon this. With the final tally, it was clear that Adrian Couteau, uh, who'd scored a massive 158 points, had won rather comfortably. Many submissions were somewhere in the 30 to 70 point range by comparison. So, what's the secret? Monte Carlo Tree Search seems to be it. Now, I've mentioned MCTS in these videos before, given its continued popularity within the academic community. It fits GVGAI rather well, um, since it's proven to be effective when working in unknown domains, carrying a large amount of uncertainty. What was perhaps more interesting is that over a quarter of submissions adopted MCTS to varying effect, with many performing poorer than the sample MCTS code submitted by the organisers, which finished third. I think there's something interesting at play here. I mean, given there are differing MCTS submissions that perform differently, is this due to the parameters used by that particular version, the variant of the algorithm, because there are different versions of the MCTS approach, and you know what qualities are required for these algorithms to perform at peak? In addition, are there other methods that could prove just as, if not more, successful in the competition? At present, it seems like MCTS will dominate, given it often performs better in unseen problems, given its lack of reliance upon pre-trained components. Despite this, there were some solutions that performed modestly successful. <laughs> Hell, even my A-star and local search-driven approach finished mid-table. Though the focus of that was just to see how far I could push my agent using rather simple components, sadly it does require an awful lot of pre-written, expert-driven knowledge because I actually had to define a whole bunch of heuristics for my agent to run in the system. However, on the whole, it actually performed not bad and I was quite proud of how it turned out considering what it was up against. So what does all this mean then for the state of the competition? It's proven a success in its first year and 
Judging by the rankings, the questions are not yet truly answered. Without a doubt, there has been significant progress in addressing the challenge, but the potential of this competition stretches far beyond where it currently stands. I do have it on good authority that the competition will be back in 2015 with some new challenges that the community has not yet faced. Given what's been accomplished thus far, it would be interesting to see what could be achieved. Even more so, given that it's reliant upon the video game description language, we can see a whole new range of games being released gradually as this competition continues to grow. I think there's also a tremendous amount of interesting potential there in exploring the, um, the notion of actually having procedural generation systems creating these games and then trying to find agents that can play them. You could end up with this kind of weird arms race dynamic where you've got um, particular systems that are actually making games and then you have other systems that are trying to play them and they're then trying to outdo one another while also operating within kind of legal confines as it were. In addition, I'm also really interested to see where future submissions and the type of technologies that are being adopted are going to go. As a community, we have sort of focused a little bit on Monte Carlo tree search, but that kind of happens. We gravitate towards things that we've discovered that work really well. Are there alternatives? Is there perhaps a new version of MCTS that's on the horizon that's going to outperform everything else? Who knows? That's sort of the interesting thing about this, and we're going to see this hopefully next year. And that's it for GBGAI for 2014. As we wrap up, I want to send out a special congratulations to Adrian once again for winning the competition, but also a thank you to Diego Perez, uh, who's the lead uh, coordinator of the competition. And he provided me with some of the video footage that you saw earlier. So thanks to him again for helping me put this together. And with that, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon. Bye!